Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and for those of you, drumroll please, waiting for Godot, I have great news for you. Godot 4 Release Candidate 1 was just released today. What you see in front of you, this is Godot 4.0 Release Candidate. So you see here, about, so you know I'm not lying to you, there it is. It's the first official release candidate available for download at GodotEngine.org. I should be up on Steam as well. We're running the old trusty TPS demo here. Uh, and uh, basically the way things go in the development world generally is you have the alphas, you have the betas, and then at that point in time, you're generally feature frozen, so you've got all the features in your game you intend to, and after that, you're basically just uh, polishing it up, and that's what release candidates are all about, basically getting this ready for production. So there's no new features being added. Uh, anything new will be in Godot 4.1. We'll get to the details of that in just a few minutes, uh, but there is a lot to look forward to in Godot 4. If you haven't followed any of my previous videos about what to expect in Godot 4 coming forward, there is a lot. One of the things you are seeing right now is the new rendering system. So uh, that is definitely a nice thing. There is now a new Vulkan renderer, but there's also an OpenGL fallback for older devices, and there's even a Direct3D 12 renderer, which should make uh, porting to, uh, say, the Xbox in the future somewhat simpler. On top of that, one of the biggest new things is we have the new lighting system and global illumination system. So the lighting system is kind of like lumens for Unreal Engine. Uh, it is based off of sign distance fields global illumination. We also have voxel-based global illumination as well. So what that more or less means is you should have an easier job making lighting and your lighting should look better. Uh, on top of that, we've also got volumetric fog and fog volumes. We've got GPU-based particle system improvements, uh, all kinds of new shader improvements. We've got support for AMD's features such as their FX Super Resolution 1 and 2.1 is in development. I don't know if that is done as of yet at this point. Uh, the 2D renderer also got some improvements. Physics were moved back to their in-house solution, so no more using Bullet. Uh, we got new navigation server for dynamic pathfinding around your world. Uh, we've got a lot of improvements to GD Script, including first class functions, lambdas, uh, new property syntax, new keyword syntax, and more. Uh, there is a brand new extension system called GD Extension that is replacing GD Native, makes it easier to uh, extend the Godot game engine, including adding new language support, like we saw uh, just recently with uh, NIM and Rust language videos I did. Uh, .NET 6 uh, support is in there as well. Uh, there is new text GUI and localization tools, uh, an all-new audio system, improved multiplayer, new improved asset importing, as well as runtime importing of GLTF files, improved tile set, tile map support for your 2D games, and a whole lot more. So those are the kind of things that you can expect in Godot um, 4.0. Now let's look at the details of the release candidate itself. So head on over to here. We see here is the Godot Engine website. Uh, details of this actual release. Not really a ton new to be announced in the fact that Godot 4.0 release candidate has been released. Um, but we are about to enter release 4.0 stable, very proud of where we are at. Before we can cut the ribbon and break out the champagne, there's still a few preview releases we must go through to establish with your help that we are truly ready. So what you can expect for the next couple weeks is the same cadence of official builds aiming to minimize the iteration time between fixing bugs and checking for regressions. We will no longer make any breaking changes or include further enhancements. All the new features, as I mentioned earlier on, are now going to be pushed off to Godot 4.1. So instead, uh, we're going to come uh, coming down on the last critical issues we want to be resolved before we ship the first stable version of Godot 4. Uh, so there are bugs out there. It won't be frictionless, so on and so forth. So there are uh, a number of things in here that were basically fixed over the previous release. This is literally in the weeds stuff. So it's not things that you're going to be too interested in unless you were working with the previous betas. We did have a number of betas getting here. By the way, uh, you can download it now from the download section. I do think... Oh, actually, Release Candidate may not actually be up on Steam. Uh, but also, uh, there is a web version that you can check out as well. And again, there were a number of fixes in this Release Candidate uh, from the last beta. Now, do keep in mind, all of these things are, of course... Um, fixes. So this is not new feature territory. I'm not telling you anything new. So if you watch my Godot 4 beta video, I kind of went through the same list of new features. Nothing there has really changed. Any new features and functionality will be down the road at Godot 4.1. So the question mark is going to be what, well, first off, what is going to be in Godot 4.0? Uh, I'm actually going to, I'll link this in the linked article down below because quite frankly, uh, I already actually covered this in the future of Godot video I did a little while back. So it's going to talk about some of the things that they're going to look at in the future things 
things like stability, performance improvements, usability. Uh, we've also got some talk about things like adding train support and new features and functionality as we go down the road. Now, the question mark you may be having in your head is, okay, well, what kind of a timeline can we expect here? And all we can really do is, uh, I can use that annoying expression of if the past is prologue. Uh, we can look at how it worked with Godot 3.5 release, which was the last, not as big as the 4.0 release, but one of the last major releases Godot went through. So Godot 3.5 was released on August 2022. Uh, so when did it actually start in Release Candidate? Well, let's go back in time. So Release Candidate 3.5. So there were seven of them. Release Candidate 3.4. 3.6, 3.5, release. Okay, I'm kind of confused. Three, two, one. All right, so May, uh, May, June, July, August. So it took four months uh, for that one to come out. And it does sound like they're going to try and be a little bit faster on this particular release, but I just want to set your expectations correctly. So even though this is a step closer to Godot 4 being here, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see Godot until the summer. So you're going to have to wait a little bit longer, but not too much. And hopefully, again, they are going to be a little bit faster on this one, because if you actually go back to uh, this announcement right here, there is encouraging wording here, because he says, basically, you'll have to stick with us what you can expect from us in the next couple of weeks is the same cadence of official builds. So we did go through the beta a lot faster for Godot 4 uh, than we did in the past. So hopefully this isn't going to be a matter of months, just per, for perspective. That's how long Godot 3.5 took to go from release candidate to final release. But ultimately, it's going to come down to how many bugs they have to crush and how crushable those bugs are. So if you do encounter problems, etc., do report them on the uh, Godot engine um, bug list on GitHub, and that will definitely help speed up the process. And hopefully there aren't too too many bugs and we won't be waiting for Godot that much longer. All right, let me know what you think. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.